It's your yes, feel-good breakfast show, indeed. <laughs> Look at us going together. There we yes. go. Um, now, next up, the, the mega wealthy 1% have done some extreme adventures only the world's richest could afford, such as Jeff Bezos' trip to space that will set you back a cool $450,000. The Ooh. recent, of course, unfortunate Ocean Gate expedition to the Titanic that cost each person around $250,000. Even Elon Musk himself plans to uh, take people to Mars by 2023 which is literally now, now. Yeah. but <laughs> why are the rich and wealthy so obsessed with these dangerous and out there adventures? So joining us this morning, we have uh, experienced climber Gilad Stern. Gilad, thank you very much for joining us, my friend. And this is an interesting conversation for yeah. sure. Yeah, firstly, again, yeah, thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Look, uh, I'm not the mega rich, I'm not Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> but you bring insight. Yes. I bring insight, I've had a bit of money and I've spent it on mountains. I'd like nice. to travel. and. Yeah. See interesting places and climb interesting mountains. Absolutely. Now, look, I want to get into what you're doing right now, but let me just paint a picture for you, Mzanzi. I mean, some people who can afford it are now embarking on dangerous adventures which they don't seem to be prepared for sometimes. Mm. Now, there are companies offering people three-week experiences, such as the Mount Everest, which includes insured safety, a generator, and a tent that will be sent to their house in advance, which will stimulate and simulate the high-altitude air conditions so that climbers can acclimatize themselves. Solves. This is interesting yeah. stuff. Now, this premium package even offers to have someone carry your oxygen cylinders for you. Also coming with the hefty price tag of 40000 to to 100000 US dollars per person. Mm -hmm. So, do you think experienced climbers are the target market? Now, this is something that we're going to be posing to both you, yeah. Zanzi, and of course our esteemed guest over here. So, so yeah, this what is do you a make of all of this, man? Fascinating concept. Yeah. I mean, this is taking preparation to obviously a different level, and, and, and you know, you you know how dangerous it can get, but now they are trying to take these precautions. They're bringing tents to your house to acclimatize, but can companies like this actually 100% guarantee your safety? I mean, it comes with a hefty price tag because obviously we are dealing with nature. Yeah. You need three things to climb mountains. You need the ability and some sort of physical ability. You need the desire and you need some money because to get to these places is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. But the desire is the problematic thing because when you really want to, I want to do sometimes, then you expose yourself to terrible danger, which mm. I realized I did. Very thrilling in prospect, but in retrospect, I'm not sure I would, should have done it because yeah. it is very scary to be in an avalanche in the Everest icefall, mm. uh, life-threatening stuff. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, because, I mean, you can't take the mentality as like, okay, cool, I've got, uh, I've got enough money, I want to do something crazy, so let's pay for the experience, yet you are still the one that's going to go through that. I always believed it could never happen to me. Mm. I always thought, well, it's, it's going to be somebody else maybe. People die, people get injured. But I thought somehow it wouldn't happen to me, and I realized that that's crazy stuff. Mm. So if you've got the money, you can do amazing stuff but you have to take along some expertise yeah. and some understanding that um, it's complicated. Yeah. You can't just yeah. pay for it and think it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, for you, obviously, you having that thought in mind, what has it changed in terms of your perspectives when going into these ventures? Because firstly, there's the why, right? Why do this in the first place? If you know that there potentially is a risk, are we even looking at the risk at all? Or it doesn't matter in this instance. And how would you relate to that? Because it seems like all this money in the world, you can do anything why risk it all is my question. What's the reason behind this? Well, the thrill is fantastic. Yeah. To stand on the peak of the highest mountain in Antarctica, for example, or see amazing places, there's a great thrill. Yeah. So you've got to balance the thrill, the reward, and the cost, the potential cost. But we tend to minimize potential cost when we assess situations. Mm. Mm. It's fantastic to get to the top of an amazing mountain, some crazy place yeah. in Iran or in Antarctica. Yeah. Yeah. It feels great. And you minimize when you're doing it the mm. potential downside. The downside means the downside. Yeah. All the way down. Absolutely. And in, in light of the recent Ocean Gate saga, a, a very, very sad story as well. But again, you had the situation where you know you could you could pay your way to to experience something incredible, but still it comes with a lot of dangers. And I think you know, those that bought the tickets, they didn't really know what they're letting themselves in for in terms of the preparation, um, you know, in terms of the, the, the tech behind it. They just bought the ticket. What do you hope people take away from, from this whole saga that we saw? I don't know anything about submarines, 
but it's a bit more complex than just buying the ticket because you've got to be prepared. One has to have some ability. I like to climb mountains and I can climb and climb. I like that. Mm. So it's not just a simple thing. You pay the money and you get the experience. Yeah. Um, I think that everyone's got to devaluate these things in our lives ourselves. Mm. We see amazing people driving crazy ways. You think that person's going to kill themselves on the road. Yeah. So I think that life is complicated, but if you have a bit of money and a bit of intention and passion, mm. uh, you can do interesting things. But you've got to weigh up the fact there's the risk as well. Mm. It's complicated. Well, but you, you, you being someone that, in my opinion, is, is, has lived, you've had a, a, a fantastic innings, to say the least, and I hope it carries on for many years to come. What advice have you sort of uh, culminated in your experience, both with having some sort of uh, way of doing things in the world a little bit easier than others, but also having all these options in front of you? What advice would you have to those that are maybe in a similar position looking for a thrill? <laughs> it's a trick question, but the only advice is do what you love, if you can. Okay. I understand that it comes with prices in life. Mm. But if you have a passion, follow it. Don't be crazy, don't get killed, don't do crazy stuff. But I've done a few crazy things and I've loved it. Yeah. Passion is good. What That's stands out for you, just before we, before we wrap up, what stands out for you as one of your absolute highlights? My highlight of my life is the ability to go up table mountain any day that I want. Look at it's that. It's right wow. here, it's fantastic. And there's even a cable car down. So to be in a place, to live in a place like Cape Town, where there is a mountain in the middle of the city, mm. and to have it available, you can pursue your passion here without necessarily going to the bottom of the sea or the top of the mountain. There we go. Gila, thank you very much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, Really exactly. appreciate the insight. And again, you know, go out there, go have awesome experiences, but just know that you are still working with Mother Nature. It doesn't matter what the number in your bank account is, there's a level of preparation that needs to be reached before you do anything crazy. Research, get in there and do it safely. Yeah.